everyone, Julie here. This video I'm going to go through and do a quick edit on this image here of um, David. Um, we had him dressed up as a, a sort of vintage look um, poker player. So um, I'm pretty happy with the way that the image is here. Um, I haven't really done many changes. We shot it with um, colored gels and I thought that I might take it into analog effects and give it some um, cool sort of vintage vibes. So what I'm going to do is just go to filter, go to Nick Collection 6 and I'm going to go to analog effects. Okay, so there's different things that we can do here. Um, I can jump in. There's some preset cameras and effects that you can go into. Um, so if you want um, classic cameras, you want color casts, black and white, um, there's double exposure and you can play with it. That's that's great. There's some fantastic um, ones that are in there. But what I want to do today um, is I want to actually go into the camera kit and walk you through how to do that. So there's a whole heap that I've already done. I've preset various things. So here's one that um, has been previously set up, um, which is kind of cool. But I want to go and go back into the camera kit now. What is cool about this, I can take that kit and I can play around with it so you can see exactly what's been used and what hasn't been used um, by the little orange here. And I can go through and I can turn them all off. So we can go back and have a look at them all one at a time. Now, this is just your basic adjustment so I can come in here. I can um, bring the color down. So if I want it quite desaturated, I can, um, of course, boost the saturation. I can do um, the control point and I might do that to just brighten his face up just a touch. Um, but I also want to put another one in here for his hand. So we've got those two points as a starting point. So then let's work our way through. So we've got lens distortion. So I can um, come in and I can have chromatic shift in here. I can have defocus in here. So I can have quite a bit of distortion. Um, you can barrel your image or you can pin cushion your image. So you can make it look like it's sucked, sucked in or pushed out, basically, um, depending on what you want to do. Um, then we have bokeh. So this gives some blur to the image. We can decide if I wanted to, for instance, just have the hand and the chip in focus, I'm just going to round that off a little bit. There we go. So if I just wanted the hand in focus or I could put um, his face in focus, um, I could have his face and his hand in focus. Um, and you can play around with that. Now you can decide um, how much strength you want, um, what bokeh style you want. Um, I'm just going to keep it with a nice round one. Um, you could have the strength of it. You can boost the highlights. You can change the aperture shape. So I was actually working with an octagon box. Um, so I'm going to change it to that. Um, your aperture rotation, you can change that, which is probably more going to be a benefit if you're using something like this. Um, whereas the octagon, it really doesn't make that much difference. Um, and the aperture 
variation so you can play with that as well so there's lots here that you can do um, and that's just with the bokeh so I'm just going to minimize both of those just at the moment um, so we can rotate and blur so if you wanted to add some blur to the image which I probably don't want to because there's already quite a bit of blur in here but if you really wanted to just protect your center point and have blur on the outside that can give you some really cool effects but I don't want to use that today so I'm just going to turn that off um, motion blur again we can do the same thing we can have motion blur um, and you can change the strength of the blur you can change the diagonal of the blur by moving this little arrow um, so I could have that just on the chips for instance again not something I want to do today um, double exposure this is something else that can be lots of fun um, you can um, use the same image for double exposure and you can have some fun with that you can also bring in a secondary image so let's just grab this one for instance and I could have that in as well um, I could drop the exposure down um, you can play around you can turn it you can do all sorts of things with that um, and if you decide you don't like that you want to go back to the original image you can get rid of that image so you can have a lot of fun playing around with that too again not something that I want on this one so light leaks so um, there's different types so you've got soft crisp and dynamic um, you can change the strength of these um, you can use a U point to decide where you want it to come in um, and you can play around with those um, I'm thinking it's still a little I'm just going to bring my saturation down a little more um, and the beauty of the knit collection is they're completely non-destructive so um, anytime you're in here you can move things around it's not like you hit one of these and it's permanent you can turn on turn it off the only time it becomes destructive as such is if when you save it and take it back into Photoshop or Lightroom um, then you have those changes permanently apart from when you turn when you um, press this little convert to smart object in Photoshop you can reopen it and re-edit your image but it does make your file size quite a bit bigger so it's up to you if you want to have it as a smart object and have it continually um, non-destructive or if you're happy to play with it um, and then try different looks and styles and things like that and it doesn't matter if it is you know destructive or not per se but while you're in the actual program it's fine it's not an issue different light leaks that you can play around with um, if you want to have it you can move them Look, you, you can spend forever playing. It's um, It can be completely addictive. Okay, so let's move over to dirt and scratches. So you've got different, um, there's nothing, there's dust and fluff, there's scratches, there's organic and there's eroded. Um, all of these, again, you can change the strength of them. Um, you can change where it is positioned just takes a second for it to bring over especially when I'm recording 
So if you don't want, you know, you don't necessarily want a big black spot on your subject's face. So you can sort of move it around so that it's in somewhere a little more desirable. And of course, you can drop the um, strength down. So um, we're really starting to build up the look for this piece now um, and I'm thinking going back in the light leaks I think I just want something a little softer even though I really like that one um, yeah I don't know you have you keep playing with things <laughs> Um, then you've got photo plate. I love the wet plate effects that you can get in um, analog. This is brilliant. So again, you've got different types. So there's streak, corroded, there's concrete looks. Um, you've got your um, control point that you can move around with it. You can change the um, strength of it. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do. So it's really um, fabulous to come in here and um, play and see what different effects you can come up with. Um, it's really interesting to be able to um, look at everything step by step by step. Sure, you can use the presets and you can play around with those. Um, but I think once you really get in here and play with each different thing, you can really get a feel for what you can do with your images. Um, so you've got lens vignettes. So if you want to, um, let's just close that one off. Let's just minimize a few of these. So we've got a bit more room to see what we can do. So you can change the shape. So this is adding like a, you know, the darkening around the edges. Um, you can change it from a circle to a rectangle if you wish to, or something in between. Um, and you can change the amount. So the amount, one side's black, the other side's white. So um, you can add a bit of a, a vignette to your images that way then you've got film type so you can change it from warm to cool there's black and white neutrals if you want to change it completely to black and white at this particular point in time um, you've got the strength of the filter that you're putting in so some are softer some are a little more contrasty um, there's so many so you've got um, different levels that you can play with you can of course play with your fade your strength your grain pixels so if you want more grain or no grain um, and the hardness of the grain that you can play with so um, it doesn't you can have cool coloring so if you just want to um, you don't have I've still got the color there but I have the film type over the top so there's cool warm neutral etc so you can play with those um, multi lens this is another one which is lots of fun as well so um, and if you, you grab the control point you can move them so this is just split it three ways but if you want to have a little more control over what's in the thing you can um, so you've got that's just three way um, then there's four this is another one which is really fun I like this one this one um, so I could have his face here more of the hand here and then the coins in the hand here so that's pretty cool I like that one gives you more of a, a different aspect So that's pretty cool. Um, you can, of course, do frames. So there's different frames. This one's already got a frame that um, appeared with it. Now you can, if I do just go back into here, I can take that frame and change it to black 
or I can take their frame off completely. You can change the border width. I might change it to black actually. I like that with the, the framing here. Um, and you've got variation and strength. So there's different things that you can take. Um, okay, so back down to frame. So I really like the first one that it popped up, actually. It's probably not vintage. Um, the other one is if you go... I'm going to keep with film strip, but I might go down. Let's have a look at some of these um, eroded ones that are towards the bottom. Um, that one's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that one. Ah, I like that one. Yeah, that one looks pretty cool. So um, I'm starting to, you know, really get a, a feel for this particular image. Um, of course, if you decide that you don't like that, you can just turn the frame off. Turn it back on and you're back into the frames again. Um, I think I actually kind of like it with, yeah... I might go without. Um, and then, of course, the last thing that we've got down the bottom here is um, a levels adjustment. So um, I'm just going to give it an overall tweak just at the end, just to give it a slight subtle curve. Um, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I might... I'm just going to pop into that multi-frames for a second. Oops. I moved it all again. Um... Maybe I'll, I'll go with what they suggested. Yeah, instead of having it run the top down, because I found the two bottom ones sort of merged into one. So let's go with that. So um, that's it, playing around with that. Now, of course, I can save this preset. Um, I'm just going to call it poker. Um, I could have called it the gambler or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to convert it to a smart object at this particular point in time. I'm just going to save it as a preset. Um, that way I can then, um, if I want to, I can bring the image back into Photoshop, apply the preset and then work from there because you could completely alter it from that starting point. So that's it for playing with um, Nick Analog Effects. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.